especially appreciate it on behalf of Student Board. Um, your presence makes this possible and allows um, our students to take their work and make it public and get some feedback and also um, be able to share with you all the good work and good thinking that they've been doing truly since June, actually, of uh, last summer. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Jessica, and she's going to get rolling. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'd like to talk to Ms. Dyson. Thanks for being here. It is so great to have all of you. Um, <laughs> you know, my topic today is how to teach and how it can be improved. So this is here because this project really started for me last year, actually, when I had my American Studies class with the students. At the end of the year, we had to write a paper to on any subject we wanted that had to do vaguely with American history. I don't remember actually how many pages it had to be, but it was. Plug in. There you go. You got it. But it was long enough that, for me at the time, it was very long, and I decided I want to do something that I'm really passionate about, or else this is going to be a very boring couple of months for me. So after consulting with Ms. Stevens a bit, we decided that my topic would be LGBT education of all forms in American high schools. And I did not intend my paper to be about sex education, even remotely. I wasn't even going to dedicate a section to it. But when I was doing my research for the project, it just kept coming up on every website, every book that I used. It was just, it just kind of wouldn't leave me alone. Um, and although it's not what my paper was about, I remember a lot about it because it kind of stuck with me. And what I learned is that only 22 states out of 50 and DC actually require any form of sex education in schools at all. 11 of those states do not require that sex education to discuss sexual orientation in any way, shape, or form. Eight states have actually actively banned any discussion in the classroom that paints homosexuality or LGBT identities in a positive light. And three states actually legally require teachers to impart negative information on homosexuality. So. And even in the states where there are no legal requirements of that sort, and even in schools that are trying to be welcoming and friendly to LGBT students, often there's just kind of this assumption of, well, about 95% of the population is straight, so why should we cater to the minority? That's a waste of time. The reason that you've catered to the minority is because there are great consequences when you don't. Because students who don't have relevant sex education in their schools often are left neglected. They don't have this information, so they're in danger. They often tend to turn to the internet, chat rooms, friends, and even pornography for sexual health information. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Um, in fact, LGBT youth across America are five times more likely than their peers to search for sexuality and health information online. As you all know, sometimes those types of sources are not reliable. So what that means is that these kids are in danger. Young gay and bisexual men ages 13 to 29 in America account for over two-thirds of new HIV infections regularly. And young lesbian, gay, and bisexual girls in America are more likely to contract an STI than their straight peers and over twice as likely to become pregnant. That's a little counterintuitive. So, what I'm trying to say is that this problem is literally ruining people's lives. Yeah, so you could just say, well, if they don't know how to have sex, then they shouldn't be doing it just to get abstinence. But no abstinence-only sex education program in the United States has ever been demonstrated to be even slightly effective in reducing STDs, reducing pregnancy, delaying sexual behavior, or reducing sexual risk-taking among students. So what this means is that we really need comprehensive and inclusive sex education because that is what has been so to make a difference. So, okay, great. Let's implement great sex ed programs across America and save these kids. Which it without easy. Uh, whenever you try to improve sex education, expand it in any way in the United States, especially if it's in any sort of LGBT inclusive way, there tends to be a lot of backlash from people who are saying, you're going to sexualize the children, you're going to push sexuality and sex on them before they're ready. And if you're including, if you're including LGBT identities, that often includes, you're going to turn my kid gay, because homosexuality is contagious, right? <laughs> um, so, 
and as we would to say everything on the stack. So here's my time for going to the website, it's a light green color, and other people, individuals like stack rooms, is this darker green color. Um, anyways, across the board, what we'll see from most experts students exclusively is that the students with some sort of queer experience look on the internet a lot more for their sexual health information. 70% of students without any clear experience have ever gone to the internet um, for sexual health information when it comes to websites. 83% of queer identified students have done the same, so that's 13% more. And when it comes to chat rooms, individual people, forums, that type of thing, it's 27% on this side and 40% on the other side. So, a lot more. And here's why I think that is, is because if you look at the health classes as this dark blue color, you will see that 79% of students at this school without any sort of clear experience get their sexual health information from their HD class, and only 57% of the clear identified students do the same. Pretty big gap. And so what I think we can determine from this is that there's a need for LGBT information in our sex ed classes here because there are a lot of queer identified students who are going to the internet, including other people, individuals, for this information, which is not a good idea. So, we also ask them some more specific questions, less demographic type things, and more, what do you want me to put in my poster for you? Um, the first question along those lines that I asked had to do with STDs, and I think the most interesting thing that this shows beyond that people want this information is that on the side of the students with, the non, with no queer experience, there is definitely a strong skew towards apathy that I was predicting. Um, these two blue categories, not helpful at all, not very helpful. They're pretty prevalent over on this side and not existent at all on that side. So, yeah, that's kind of why I didn't want to group everyone together. Um, and no, I, I don't blame the straight kids for not caring about how to prevent STDs if they ever happen to have sex with someone of their same gender because they're probably not going to. I mean, I probably wouldn't be too concerned with things that didn't apply to me either. That's kind of human nature. But the fact remains that they are not my target audience and they are not the ones in need of extra help. The next question I asked was the same question but for pregnancy and birth control. And it was by far the most popular of my ideas across the board. This gray color indicates very helpful and dark green. Okay, cool. Welcome back. Um, <laughs> the dark green color is somewhat helpful. So, very popular idea for this one, which actually kind of surprised me because I thought that that was something my HD class pre did pretty well on, but okay. Um, the next one was about basic information. So here is what it means to be bisexual. You are probably bisexual if you tend to find both men and women attractive. Um, and here's another one where you're going to see a very strong skew towards we don't care on this side. I mean, the very helpful is this little tiny gray section here. And over on that side, it's almost half of the people. So very big difference there. Um, and the last thing that I asked them about as far as resources was just a list. Because if you're on the internet, maybe you don't know. Is this website reliable? Where do I get information on STDs? Is actually going to be helpful and not get me killed? That type of thing. Um, and that was, again, pretty popular among the students with some sort of experience and not so much on this side. Um, it was a very big difference. Um, the neutral or unhelpful responses make up 67% on the non queer side when you add them all up, and only 23% on the queer side. So that's about <coughs> two thirds versus significantly less than one third. Um, so having all this information, well, once I had all that information, um, I sat down and I made the post of. Yes, okay, awesome. Um, so with all that information, I sat down and made the list of just opened up pages and kind of started getting 
sharing to work with all the information that Ms. Polly and I have collected together. And I'm going to pass out some sample copies to you in a second. No, they are not actually official. They have not been approved by the school yet. So I'm going to need all of them back. Don't go around telling people that Mrs. Wick Academy is doing this exact thing yet. Um, and as I pass those out, please give me suggestions. If you notice a typo, if you think something is formatted badly, if you think there's something I should take out or save better. Most of all, title suggestions. I am not good at thinking of titles for things. I have not been able to do it for my essays since I started writing essays. So just to stand in right now for formatting purposes, please come up with something for me because I'm bad at it. to your survey is one if they're ninth graders uh, and this is where I think um, you know uh, more research should happen at Mercesburg if they were ninth graders they hadn't had human development yet if the, and then if they were new 11th and 12th graders they hadn't had <coughs> human development yet so I'm wondering if you know that question could be asked you know as far as are we are we reaching enough people with the information in human development just for 10th grade um, about uh, all these things that you brought up um, and how we could do that yeah you know I mean? in my survey I actually I did not make the questions optional because I thought that people would just go through and answer like three questions because we don't care uh -huh. um, but what I did do was for the questions that pertain directly to the HD class, mm -hmm. I had a specific option for, I don't know because I have not taken HD class yet, or I have not been in HD long I'll enough to answer this. So, my, so there was nobody in the survey who just picked a random question so we could finish the survey. Perfect, that was my um, question. Good. I agree with you that it would be great to expand the health curriculum here at Mercersburg, mm -hmm. maybe make it for all four years somehow and just really expand that in every way. But I'm only here for a couple more months. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that was my question. Good. Thanks. Yes. So that's not going to skew anything. Yeah. Um, under labels, the first uh, uh, full shade, uh, you have uh, gender expression, gender identity, uh, and sex. And those aren't actually labels. Um, that's true. That's more of a, yeah, I should probably change the wording there because it's not just labels. Because these are like keywords. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free to write that directly on if you want to, but I'll remember it. Thank you. Yes. Um, Jessica, I'm curious how the LGBT community feels about the word queer. Is that, um, are they welcoming to that word? Because Oh, just like any time that you ask one individual about a huge and humongous group that encompasses people of all backgrounds and beliefs and everything, there's no one right answer to that. Queer did used to be a slur, um, so I can understand where your hesitance is coming from, but currently it is being reclaimed, and I would say that the vast majority of the community, to the best of my knowledge, is quite comfortable with reclaiming it, especially when it is used by another LGBT person. Um, I wouldn't go around using it casually if you were straight, um, but yeah. It's also the best kind of umbrella term that we have right now. Um, 
if you if you want to say that you're not straight, but you don't want to identify yourself as anything in particular, you know, there's no real good way to that other than yourself. I mean, personally, I'm not like 100% comfortable with it, even, but I do recognize that there is a need for a word that fills that kind of gap in the vocabulary, so that's why I do that. Okay, well then I think we need to go on.